Today we are reacting to That Practical Mom. Her name is Callie. She used to actually have the channel But First Coffee and has recently rebranded, if you're not in the know. And I would consider myself a casual audience member, which means sometimes I watch her, sometimes I don't. But of course, this video caught my attention when she says she can help us declutter 50% faster. So let's see what her thoughts are. You know I love doing five minutes matters. I think it is probably one of the fastest ways to make progress because it almost feels like you're not doing anything and it goes by so quickly and then yet, it's really not that big of a deal. So let's see what tips Callie has for us to declutter 50% faster. Surprise, surprise friends, I have moved. So we bought a new house, which is a whole story on its own, but we essentially took a really quick closing date and in seven days went from no plans of moving, like we were literally gonna stay here and add an addition to packing up our entire lives. <laughs> it I don't know if I ever went into this, but I actually moved in a very similar timeline, slightly longer, so I feel her, I don't wanna say pain, but I understand what it's like to move on that quick of a timeline. I did technically have more time because I had the apartment for the following month already, but I just wanted to get out. And of course, when you have something new and it's available and you have the keys, you're just ready to get right in. So that's pretty much what I did too. Which in case you're wondering, I kind of zero out of 10 recommend moving when you are in your second trimester with a one, three and five year old at home. But you know, I like to live life on the edge. So I've been neck deep in packing, which means I've also been neck deep in decluttering because there's something really motivating about moving that makes you reevaluate all of your stuff and what you wanna take with you. It's kinda like when you have company over and you just have a new level of motivation to clean things that you usually wouldn't clean in just your day-to-day -day cleaning. I agree. And what's interesting is how much stuff I got rid of when I was packing to move out of the apartment and the amount of stuff I threw away unpacking uh, let's not tell my moving crew. Shoot, a few of them watch this. Sorry. Moving really gives you this unique lens to look at your stuff. It forces you to touch literally every single item you own and ask yourself, is this something that I want to continue to hang on to? Is this something that is worth putting in a box and bringing with me and then unpacking once I get there. And you might be more inclined to get rid of more when you are moving because of this reason. But that really got me thinking, do we actually have to move house in order to get this motivation? Or is there a way that we can hack our brain into decluttering like we are moving without actually having to do all of this? Ooh, hack your brain. Now, I'm not a huge fan of like hacks. I want lasting results from these efforts. So I'll be interested to hear if this is something I could actually implement over the long term and is a mindset that will stick. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Callie, also known as That Practical Mom, and today I'm going to be sharing some practical strategies that create a moving mindset. Don't forget to go and check out her channel and give her some love because we're watching her video today. Create a moving mindset so you can declutter more effectively and faster. First up, let's address the maybe stuff. I feel like the maybe stuff is the stuff that comes up a lot more when we are moving. It's a lot easier for us to hang on to this maybe stuff when we are staying put because we don't have to physically move it. We don't have to physically box it up. So we can sort of look at it, be like, mm, I might use that. We don't actually have to do something with it. And so it's easier for it to sort of stick around. But when we are moving, we now have to take this item. We have to put it in a box. We have to put it on a truck. We have to take it to the new house. We have to unpack it. And so we're able to look at our maybe stuff a little bit more effectively. I definitely agree with that. And I do have plans to go through my maybe box items soon. So if you want to join me for that, let me know and I will happily let you hang out with me while I go through my maybe stuff. I definitely have my fair share of stuff that I've hung on to just in case, especially because of my season of life. I have small children and I'm currently am having another baby. And so we have a lot of like child related stuff that I hang on to just in case another baby might need it, which in our mind is a very like logical way to justify something. And that's how I ended up with a corner of my basement that was just full of random baby gear. I don't have kids, but I could also totally see this mindset, especially since, you know, I have a group of friends who are, I would say re-babying. And by that, I mean, you know, their kids are in high school and or graduating and they're like, hey, let's have another baby. And I'm like, 
good for you. I'm too tired and old to babysit, but have fun. <laughs> I actually literally just said that to one of them the other day. I'm like, I'm happy for you guys, but uh, I will chip in for babysitting before I offer to babysit. But as I went through this corner, as we were getting ready to move, because I had to physically touch every single item, it really made me address each item individually. And so I think even if you're not moving, you can hack your brain into doing this so that you are forced to physically do something with these items to give you a chance to stop and ask, is this really worth the hassle of doing it? I actually heard an amazing analogy from this on a YouTube video some point, I don't remember when, if you know who it was. I love that we can all learn from each other and this is why I love YouTube so much because it's really just collaborating on life. And how amazing is that, that we live in a day and age where we can all share all of these tips and tricks and ways to do things better. It really makes it hard to complain about first world problems, but we still will from time to time. Feel free to leave it in the comments down below, but this woman was talking about um, stuff she had in her basement and essentially there was some sort of like sewage problem. We got sewage all over a bunch of stuff that was in her basement and it kind of made her ask the question, what stuff do I care about enough that I'm willing to wash poop off of it? It's kind of that same idea when you're moving, right? Because it's like, what do I care about enough that I'm going to tend to it? I'm going to pack it up. I'm gonna make sure it's safe. I'm gonna take it to the next house as opposed to just being like, oh yeah, maybe I'll use that. I'll continue to just keep it here forever. If I had a catastrophic event in this basement, would I be willing to wash poop off of it? <laughs> I mean, it's a great analogy. <laughs> oh man. And could you actually, you know, wash poop off of an item? Cause that would be another whole thing, but I digress. Oh, wow. I've always said a, true sign of unconditional love is being willing to deal with someone else's poop. And um, I never thought to look at my belongings that way. And that's going to be a really interesting. How much do you really value this item? As I was going through my baby gear corner, we have a bassinet that came with our stroller. The stroller comes with this bassinet attachment. It is a very nice bassinet attachment it fits onto the stroller that we still use to this day. It's high quality, it's beautiful, a baby might use it. But then I realized I don't actually need this because our family never really used this bassinet attachment. I've had three babies with this same stroller, about to have my fourth, and I have maybe used this bassinet attachment two or three times. And so while it's very easy to hang on to it because it is useful and because it is practical, and there are probably people who use this attachment for the stroller, there's a reason that they make it. Another item that came up was actually the travel bag. I feel like that's pretty important to think about is those just in case items. Now, obviously there's real emergency stuff that you would want to keep. Yeah, just in case I might someday use this. And I know I just, what did I just do this? Oh. Oh yeah, that was like an injury related, what was the hot cold compress. So like worth keeping around for sure. Another item that came up was actually the travel bag for this specific stroller. We used this travel bag one time when we only had one kid and this was a stroller that we used to travel. Once we had a second child, we bought a stroller specifically for traveling. So we never travel with our day-to-day -day stroller anymore. But when I changed the question to ask about the item, do I use it? Have I been using it? Does my family use it? How many times have we used it? It. Instead of just listing the value of an item, list the value of that item to your specific family. And of course, would you be willing to wash poop off of it? Oh, that phrase is never going to get old now. <laughs> A really great way to hack your brain into addressing maybe stuff even when you're not moving is to allow yourself a maybe pile in your home, but remove it from your main living space. Maybe this is a basement or an attic or garage, just somewhere that you keep your extra stuff. And as you declutter, if you come across something that you're not sure about, it's not an obvious yes, but for some reason you're having a hard time putting it in the donate or toss pile, allow yourself to put it in the maybe pile. You can even consider putting a date on this box and then you're gonna store it out of sight. Now in six or 12 or 24 months, you can go back into that maybe box and see all these items that you haven't needed. I have actually done this and what was it for? Oh, it was for old bedding. And I do think that it was really worthwhile to put that date on there. I think I marked it for something like six months and went over six months because did I actually remember to go on that date and check it out? No, but when I went back to that box, it was obvious I hadn't needed to 
you know, have that backup emergency set of sheets for any kind of thing. And then I thought to myself, well, I would make do without it and probably sleep on the couch. And of course, recently someone barfed on the bed, not naming names, but uh, honestly just flipped that comforter off. And then I grabbed another blanket out of my pile of blankets that I'm never going to fully declutter and it was totally fine for the night. The thing about a maybe box is you're still allowed to go in there and get those things out. You're not officially getting rid of them in your house. So it's sort of a very safe way to declutter. But what you end up realizing is about 97% of the time, you don't end up going back for any of these items. And so it sort of ends up being a little bit of this aha moment for you of, wow, this item has been in here for all of this time and I never thought about it. I never missed it and I never needed it. Sort of like my bassinet. At the time of decluttering, there there's a lot of yes and no questions that you have to make and that can be really fatiguing on your mind and so if you're allowed to put something into a maybe box it sort of avoids the procrastination or the slowdown allowing you to declutter a lot faster because you're not getting hung up on all of these yes and no's when you give yourself this sort of gray area of the maybe box. I hadn't considered that a maybe box would make decluttering go faster and I know there are people who would argue it makes it go slower because you have to go back through it again eventually anyway but for the purpose of making progress and only progress, I think that it is worthwhile to keep that maybe box. I did actually have something that has been in a maybe box for, shoot, I can't remember exactly how long. Was it before I started the channel? I can't remember exactly how long. I feel like it was actually a little bit more than six months, but I did have to go back in and grab something out. And there has also been one other item that I've been seriously considering grabbing out of a maybe box that has been in the maybe realm for closing in on a year. So I do like that for those things. Now, if I would have decluttered those items, one of them would have sucked to repurchase or try to get something similar. The other one I genuinely needed in that moment. So I guess it's really just up to you in your own parameter of judgment of what you feel is a reasonable amount of time. And that time period might depend on the things in that maybe box. Another simple hack for your brain that you can steal from the motivation of moving is to do category sweeps of your house. So this is when you walk through a space of your house and you focus on just one kind of item. So grab a garbage bag, walk through the house and just focus on trash. Simply yes or no, what's garbage and what's not. Pretty much Dana K. White's way of decluttering where you start with trash and only trash and the other category right after that would be duh clutter, which is like, oh no, this is broken. I need to get rid of it. Or, hey, this belongs in another room. So clearly I just need to deal with that. And you can do this with donations. It's great to do on a day you know you're gonna be driving by your local donation center. Grab a box, great tip. just look around at anything you could donate. Skim the bookshelves, do a quick browse of your closet. Really often when we declutter, what we end up doing is cleaning and organizing. And certainly these are very important steps, but they distract from the task at hand, which is decluttering. By picking a single category allows you to be more on track, avoid those kind of detours that happen when we declutter. I recently did with this with my hall closet where I did a run of declutter and declutter only. And when I was done, it definitely was less full. I clearly had less stuff and it looked like crap, but I really got out, I don't know, probably 80 or 90% of the things that needed to go left that day and then just by organizing it on another day with a fresh set of eyes is when I was able to pick out that last about 10% of stuff that ended up just being trash and I don't know that I would have necessarily known that on the day of you know the initial declutter but then I was able to actually focus more and more on organizing not just decluttering it happened naturally but only by way of organizing. We know that our brain loves to complete tasks. It usually releases a little bit of dopamine. By breaking something big into smaller tasks and then completing each one of them, it's sort of naturally motivating. And you can use that same hack with decluttering. Instead of decluttering a whole bedroom, pick just one little spot, like part of a closet or your desk. Get that little spot decluttered totally and completely. Not getting distracted by uh, other areas and you'll see how great it feels and then it'll give you momentum and motivation to move on to the next spot. I totally 
totally agree with the momentum of it. And even if you're not actively in a mode of decluttering in the time period or days following, your mind is still looking for something to get rid of and that lens is still just like activated and on. I had never thought of it in this way of a smaller task being able to feel like completion, but I do think it is a great way to help ourselves go, hey, I actually finished something instead of feeling like, but I didn't finish the whole bedroom. And it's more of a focus shift. I don't know that I would necessarily call this a brain hack. Maybe it is depending on how you want to look at it, but I do feel like this is a good shift in your mindset. All right, finally, I wanna chat about some of the questions that you can ask yourself as you are decluttering. So my husband and I, as we were decluttering our basement this weekend, he had this like random set of hardware to something. And he was like, I think I'm just gonna get rid of it because if I ever needed it, I would just get again. And I reminded him of something I often ask myself when I'm decluttering, particularly when I'm cluttering those less visited areas that we tend to visit when we're moving like basements, attics, spare rooms. If I need this in a year, will I know where to find it? If you have a bad habit of keeping lots of little odds and ends because they're technically useful, right? Little kitchen appliances, crafts, DIY supplies, tools, hardware, kid toys, games, then you probably have a lot of little boxes and bins and baskets somewhere to keep them. And while you could look at these things and say, yes, I definitely could maybe need this screw someday in the future, the question is when that need arrives, will you remember where the exact spot is that you put it? For things like tools and hardware, I do, I might not actively remember exactly what I have available, but because I do have that dedicated area of this is where I would look for this type of thing or cords or whether it's command hooks, maybe a nail to hang something on the wall, that's where I would look for it first. But there have been items in the past where, like for instance, a set of markers that I 100% completely forgot that I had. So if I needed markers or wanted markers for something, I absolutely would have gone out and bought new ones. So it really just depends on that sort of thing. But by asking these questions, I think that's what she's getting at. Would you remember this? So for me, because I don't get hardware very often, I know to start looking in that area first, but it also might depend on what it came from. Another question I love to ask myself is, is it worth the amount of space or time it takes to keep it. I use this one all the time, especially in my main living areas of my home. It is so amazing to me how many things we keep simply because they're just there without even asking ourselves if it's taking us more work to keep them than it's worth. So let me give you some examples of what I mean here because I find that this question can be really helpful. Example number one, coffee machine. This takes up basically our entire appliance garage and our kitchen takes up space for mugs and coffees and the cabinets, but my husband and I both drink coffee every morning and often have a mid-afternoon iced coffee as well. So the space it takes up is worth the amount of time that we use this product for. Another example I always give are my kids' magnet tiles. We have two huge baskets. We pick up magnet tiles every day in our home. Basically every day, my children are being asked to clean up magnet tiles. I'm finding some on the floor. So they take up a chunk of space and they take a good amount of time to manage. But they are the number one used toy in our house. All three of my kids play with them. We get hours of use of them every single week. And so they're very much worth the time and space and energy that we use to keep them. I think that is a really excellent point. You know, I wonder if like I assigned a dollar amount to it. So let's just say you make $20 an hour. This is just purely for an example. And you know it would take an hour to manage something. Would you spend that $20 to manage it or would you get rid of it? Or, you know, remove it from your counter or gosh, I mean, she didn't come out and say it from a dollar perspective, but that might be another angle to consider. Also, my cousin's son is turning two soon, and I wonder what the age is for magnet tiles because I think he would really enjoy them. I'm definitely going to her channel and checking out if she has a link to those magnet tiles because, again, we're watching her video today. I'll give her the credit and hopefully she makes a little bit of a commission off of my purchase. Another example could be the bassinet attachment that I told you about earlier. It was big and it was bulky and it literally couldn't store anywhere convenient in the basement. I was constantly shifting it around to try to get other things in the basement and I had not used it in years. It was no longer providing value to me for the amount of space it took up and the amount of time it required me to take care of it. And coming back to my earlier tip about the maybe pile, I always ask, 
How long has it been since I last needed or used this item? Did this come up last time I decluttered and then I kept it only to just not use it again? Sometimes just the perspective of seeing how long you had something just to never use it can be very helpful. A lot of the ways that I'm forced to look at my stuff as I'm moving, I really hope to continue to take with me as I move into the next space. I really am going to think about these things like how long has it been since I used it? I do agree with this for the most part. Again, there's going to be those items like hardware and nails and stuff that you don't use them every day. I might not use them for two years and then suddenly I find new wall art and I want to hang it. So um, there's that or hey, I, you know, I'm at the age where I don't go to a lot of weddings currently. That's just not the season that I'm in. But there are dresses that are a little bit fancier for work for my comfort. But I would still want in the event of, you know, someone's getting married and I want to look a little bit nicer. So if I go several years without needing it, it would really depend on the occasion and the use case that I would make for it. Would I know where it was if I even needed it? And really being good about managing the maybe stuff in my home. Because let me tell you, it feels so nice when you have finished a big declutter. The feeling of getting rid of a lot of that extra stuff that you didn't need always feels so much better than having some random piece that you maybe might need sometime. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I sure did actually. And again, I'm only a casual viewer of Callie, so I don't know that I've ever actually watched any of her decluttering videos if she has others. This I don't know if she has others. She probably does. Go ahead and check out her channel. Give her some love and support. And if you're also in need of a child's gift, maybe consider those magnetiles that she mentioned and use her link. As always, I will pop one up right here for her. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by and I cannot wait to visit with you in the next one. Bye.